Baby, let me tell you that every woman has been through that little eyelash flail that Tondi had <laughs> at the pool after crying. You got to take them lashes off. Hence the reason I don't have none on right now. your girl Talisa Ray what's up how you doing Ray of sunshines we are reviewing ready to love season number two episode number six um listen number five is gonna be up right after this <clears throat> I had some technical difficulties I talk about them in the video so when we open up the scene we see the fellas at the cigar lounge it's familiar to us because why they introduced that to us last season Tommy straight out, let them know, listen, I set y'all up. Y'all gonna thank me for it. Thank me now for a barbecue pool party. Meaning the ladies is gonna be scantily dressed in they, you know, two pieces looking all cute. Y'all know how y'all do at the pool parties. Okay, listen, if you don't do it at the pool party, uh, take some pointers from Nina. Because her, her little outfit uh, was all the way together. Anyway, he also lets them know that three that two women will be eliminated that two men were eliminated last last week and those two men were chica and terrell like they didn't know that already they found out in the cigar lounge terrell and chica didn't call them and be like yo we got kicked off huh anyway i'm actually sitting here looking at carrie liking him more and more i actually like the way he dresses and everything i talk about that more in my previous uh review that's gonna go up in a few minutes okay go check it out nonetheless we see they at the pool party it's a nice little you know house mansion in atlanta so all the houses out there is big and cheap i need to be just moving like why am i paying all this money when the, my mortgage right now could be a a, a fucking six bedroom four bathroom <laughs> pool having jacuzzi possibly a sauna nonetheless that's not what we're here for the ladies begin to arrive and they look beautiful. I mean, the men are looking really hot themselves. I was like, okay, Mario, I, I like your little body. Honey, it's all the way, all the way together chocolate. Yes, baby, all the way together chocolate. Alexis says, uh, I wrote down, she must have said this in her confessional because it was random. Um, I need to see and see and feel that someone is genuinely interested interested in me, and I'm with her on that. Like I gotta know before I put my eggs in the cart. I got to know that you you for me. Uh, when Nina arrives, she feels some type of way because why? Shima and Darren are all hugged up over there. Okay, all hugged up, honey, bay bay bay, all ready together. All sitting up, kiki and ha ha, and having cute little conversations. I wrote down right here. She's out, cause she ain't speaking to nobody else. She's got an attitude. She's salty. She goes and becomes antisocial. And I honestly am all like, I thought we passed this last episode. You did so well, Nina. Like conversing, but like I had said previously, she really does do better in one-on-one -on -one conversations versus group convos like she is really anti-social it is showing she was supposed to come in because she was super cute in that black with that black little lace cover up i was like you're supposed to go on and sashay to hell what what darren and shima got going on but girl you honey you're gonna be out and then i forgot that originally she had liked mario she needed to try for brent too like she might have ruined her chances with mario anyway let's keep going we see Brent and Aisha sitting over there at the pool and but Aisha's like, listen, I'm all into Brent and he's not calling. I don't think that you're interested. Like, I mean, that a valid concern. And when Brent says some shit like, um, he, you know, oh, I thought I was showing interest or whatever. And she's walking away and he says in his confessional, he likes for things to just flow naturally. 
um, and that she's being a bit aggressive, I thought to myself, but where? I didn't see any of that as aggressive. And how in the hell else are we going to know that you you rocking with us, you feeling with us, other than you getting to know us, calling us, hanging out with us? I think that's part of the problem. See, the thing is, he really isn't that interested in her. Last episode, I thought, oh, okay. They vibe, they connected, but he's really not that interested in her. We are still in that same space. And um, maybe he was turned off by her, laid up in between his legs. I don't know, but previous to this, from what she said, he wasn't even calling. Like, girl, this is the problem with putting our eggs in one cart. When the cart goes rolling off, when the basket drops and the eggs break, we ain't got nothing else to fall on. I mean, do y'all disagree with me on that? Let me know down below in the comments, because I could totally be wrong, and y'all want to set me straight. I mean, y'all like it anyway. Now... The Mario and Tandy situation, I have like a catch-22, like I'm teeter-tottering back and forth in one breath. I'm all like, I like the fact that he sees her as more than a sexual being. So when she squirted that water gun at him and says, I'm a squirter, you know, that was a sexual innuendo. And he was taken aback by it. And I feel like the reason he was taken aback by it was because not only was she saying it and it was sexual, but there were men around and you guys, I, there were men around and you have to be careful because what we say and see is playful. Men don't see the same way. They think, oh, she's sexual. Oh, she's with the business. Um, and so I understood where he was coming from because he genuinely actually likes her genuinely has a connection with Tanji but in the next breath so when he goes and he pulls her to the side because he wants to have a conversation with her you can see her baggage showing you know what I'm saying honey bag lady you gonna hurt your back and I'm not just talking about Tanji I'm talking about all of us have to work through our issues because how she saw that was him being controlling and not him providing insight because what he said was all the fellas are listening and fellas do talk I'm telling you, shop talk, how they see this. And I want you to understand that. But she felt it, felt as if it was someone trying to control her. Now, if you've ever been in that situation where you have been controlled and someone tries to uh, dictate your actions, you would totally agree with what Tandy is saying. But I did, I saw both sides of it. You know, my heart went out to her. And then I was like, he does like her because he's actually addressing the concern. Like, this is a concern. I don't want them looking at you in that manner. Not necessarily don't be you, but I don't want them looking at you like, oh, I'm going to hit that. She a squirter. Baby, y'all better get into it. I mean, if you disagree with me, let me know down below in the comments. You know, I'm here for your disagreements, okay? And listen, I really feel like Mario was careful with his word choice. Like he really was mindful of the things that he was saying. But to be honest, when some shit hits the fan, when you feel some kind of way, when you carry in that kind of baggage, it don't matter what it is. Any little thing can trigger you. And so honestly, at this point, I would say, you know, you know, listen, Tony needs to go ahead and unpack some of them back, some of that baggage, some of that shit from past relationships so it does not hinder her in the future. I mean, y'all can disagree with me if you want to, but do it down below in the comments in order for us to really um, be have the ability to express and to receive love, to be in a healthy, successful, committed relationship. Some of that stuff we got to let go and we got to let, pe let people in and hear what other people have to say. I digress. We're going to put a pin in that because they keep going. They keep talking. So then we see Brit and Alexis, okay? I looked at Alexis like, okay, that sun is getting to you, girl. You looking spent. You pretty and everything, but brush your hair back or something. Put it behind your ears. Um, he feels like he has a connection with her, like they're vibing. Uh, even Alexis says that she appreciates the conversation that they have, that it seems to be, uh, you know, that there seems to be a connection that is easy flowing. Listen, Alexis has no problem putting her eggs in more than one basket. I'm going to put it over here and over here and over here. Uh, because I'm not going to be left holding the bag. My All my eggs is in one cart. My cart crashes. Somebody steals my basket and I ain't got no eggs. Now, I'm gonna, I can appreciate that because she understands what it means today. 
uh, as women, we need to figure out what it means to date. Okay, dating is a process where you a process of elimination. Men do it all the time. I ain't saying sleep with them, but definitely figure out what's good for you and eliminate the people that don't that ain't enough, that don't mean nothing, that you ain't connecting with, that you ain't vibing with. It's cool. We see uh, Divine noticing the connection between London and Alexis, okay? They over there in the pool, Kiki and Ha Ha, talking about uh, a getaway vacation um, to a cabin, okay? Speak the language that we like, okay? Relaxation, focusing on me. And Divine notices it. Like, she says... I'm noticing that his, he's interested in other people. Baby, we know specifically the only other person he's interested in is Alexis. It's either you or Alexis. And that is your biggest competition as it relates to London. Because Alexis really feels London. Okay? But fortunately for Divine, London's like, uh, uh, come on over with me, Divine. Come on, I'm grilling. This is what I like to do. I want you to come in here in the kitchen with me. You know, he says because she likes to cook. So let me see. Let me see her put her money where her mouth is. And they have a conversation. Divine is actually pleased with where it's going because it is no longer a shallow sexual attraction conversation. She actually made mention about that in her in her confessional. But if you notice her interaction with him, she's the one that sets the precedent. She's the one that sets the tone with I like the spread. You know what I'm saying? Now you look attractive, but you're setting that playful ha ha uh, sexual exchange attractive to you kind of energy you wanted more and i'm glad that you decided to let me say so what's up with you let me ask because you and your feelings now you got to figure it out and it was nice to hear him actually say you know i want someone equally yoked uh someone that's loyal somebody that i can count on you know what i'm saying my ride but listen most of us as women we ain't gonna die with you but i i appreciated that and it let us see a different side of london and that next breath, honey, she was like, okay, so who else you been saying this to? And he was like, nobody, fellas. Listen, you do know you in the process, too. You do know just like y'all talking in them lounges, the women are, are talking, too. Nevertheless, he said, she says, uh, well, that's not what I hear. You know, I see you with Alexis. I see you connected or whatever the hell it was. And pretty much starts, like, stabbing the meat. <laughs> the tenderloins, the chicken... Uh, Chicken, chicken fillets or whatever the hell that shit was. Got to stab in the meat. And I was like, ooh, that ain't a good look. That's reminding me a lot of fatal attraction. And that is not what we are, who we are, where we going, what we want to be. It is not a good look. He got to sweating in the kitchen because of the simple fact that all of the energy she was putting out. Like, I thought that was a bit much. And it seemed a little bit possessive, okay? Uh, later on, we find out, though, in her confessional, she said, I've never been envious or jealous or insecure, but territorial I am. And that nice stabbing was proof of her territorial behavior. Mm -mm. So we see Reva and Mario in the, in the pool together. One thing I said here is, girl, let them know about that lace front. I can't get my hair all the way wet because this lace front is going to fall off in the water. This is glued down. Honey, and if you anything like me, I don't even glue mine down. So I'm glad that she let it be known like, oh, yeah, no. But uh, they flirting and seeming to have a good time. They kiki and hee hee ha 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 All extra and shit. Like, she, Reva, is making it known that I'm connecting with somebody. My legs are wrapped around him. First off, uh, this is your first interaction with him. Y'all know how them bathing suits be. Them bathing suits, little, them little liners, the little panty connector in between. Honey, y'all, that's easy to, to slip to the side. Put your legs down. Put your legs down. This is your first interaction, okay? It's too much. It's too sexual for me. Especially since you're on TV. If you was by yourself and you felt like being like that, okay. Because I ain't want to judge you, okay? Like, yeah, girl, whatever. Um, But she's letting it be long. No, because you see her and Carrie don't have no interaction after last, after last week. Um, and she has to figure out where she fits in. Uh, Tandy sees it. Tandy acknowledges it like I wouldn't even have noticed that they was in the pool if it wasn't for all that fake laughing. Honey, pipe down. You're being too extra. you over the top. That's pretty much what I heard. <laughs> you ain't got to do all that. We see you. We see you. You want it to be known. It's known. Hello? Baby, let me give it to you straight, honey. That's Nina. No cap Nina, okay? 
she is not playing these ladies are not playing with these men they are letting them know like i'm digging you and i ain't liking what i see okay uh nina says <laughs> oh you found some time for me this is me this is me interpreting oh you find some found some time with you with me uh but you know you should go back on over there with your little girlfriend what he looking lost and shit you've been hugged up with ashima the whole time you talking about you interested in me you trying to check for me but i don't see you checking for me because you over there with babe baby because <laughs> y'all got little pet names now like don't play with me you said you were interested we've been kikiing and ha ha and all this time and now all of a sudden I ain't here because Ashima's in the place in the building. You don't you don't acknowledge me anymore. I mean my feelings about that. So um I like the quietness about Darren. I like the way he handled it. You know, he was like, listen, we grown and let's keep it sexy. Okay. I mean, really, this is what the process is. You know, she said she understood that. You know, she said it last episode too. He said, Do you want me to get Ashima over there? She was like, I don't feel like no female energy. Ashima is close enough. To hear that, and you see her side eyeing and looking like, bitch, get a, don't mess with my man. I get to you, whatever the song say. But you know what I'm trying to say. I'm all like, see, this, 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 this whole mix. See, what we don't know in real life, when they be dating more than one person, we don't have it in our face. This is up front in our face, and it's a little harder to deal with, honey. It is a little, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not jealous. I don't have an insecure bone in my body. I uh, used to. Um, I can stand firm in a room, beautiful on my own. But that don't mean I'm not going to feel some kind of way seeing somebody that I'm vibing with talking to somebody else. I mean, it's appropriate, but keep it in check. So we see uh, Ashima and Mario talking. Ashima's over there playing the therapist. And he pretty much says, you know, he sees that Tiny blew up and it's like red flags. And I'm all like, whoa, hold on, hold on. Here's one of those things where women and men communicate differently. She was passionate about what she was saying. So much so that she knew that it was escalating and had to stop herself and was like, you know what? I'm, I'm about to go to this bathroom. But you kept talking and she said, I'm going to go to this bathroom. And then you got to make it like it's your decision. You dismiss her. Yeah, you go ahead and go to the bathroom. I honestly feel like it was just the timing um, and because it's such a sensitive issue and a lot of times if you don't let shit simmer down and you start talking about it again, all the frustration, if we don't know how to control that, all that frustration, uh, because I like you and I'm interested in you and I'm feeling some kind of way, it comes right to the surface. So I think that he misread the red flags and I'm so glad that he decided to have that conversation with Shima and Shima decided to call old Miss Tandy over to have a conversation with uh uh mario and find that they just both it was bad timing not bad timing but it was a miss in communication you know what i'm saying that um they both were still interested in one another and that they needed to talk it out and baby let me tell you something y'all already know that i i had got one over swoon by two things from mario the first thing was the way he handled the tandy and nina uh, blow out the second thing was the prayer and now the way he was handling her um being sensitive to her listening to her allowing her to be vulnerable like reassuring her like the way he touched her face the way once he found out that this was an issue that she had been dealing with like how he decided you know what let me handle her with care because i like her my little heart look at the little tear in the back the little the duck because that's a rarity some of these things that these men are doing are showing that they are ready to love but is that just because i'm a woman and is it because they they gotten so good at it they know what to do i don't know but whatever it was he won me over mario keeps racking in uh points with me and i'm really hoping that he stays i really hope that he goes for the long haul and him and tandy really do look good together to the point that reva is over there seething writhing hissing <laughs> in the pool like i just was over here with my legs wrapped around you intertwined with you and here you are over there having this very intimate moment with tandy baby some things is just what it is his connection with you right now is purely sexual you have dictated that uh you keep dictating that reva you keep 
on showing people that you are a sexual being, but that's not what you want. Got mad at Carrie. Listen, you can't do that. You can't, you can't, you can't do that. And then be mad because he over here connecting, vibing with Tandy on a real level, on an intimate level. He is attracted to her sexually, but he is also attracted to her emotionally. Like they have now synergized. Chemistry is like flowing over there. He don't even want to go socialize with nobody else. He wants to be in her space. That's what I'm talking about. Be in my space. Focus on me. Think about me. Yes. Anyway, this whole Jimmy and Kimber thing is too much for me, okay? It went left quick. Now, they are enjoying each other's company. They vibing. You know that Kimber like Jimmy. Uh, not no more. Kimber's like, you know what? I'm cutting him off. Like, I'm done with it. Because he had a question about her previous relationship with ex Jail Bay. Wanted to know what kind of, you know, communications that they had going on. Any letter writing. Have you gone to see him? When was the last time? I mean, she did say that the relationship was eight months ago. So, let's give him that much. And, uh, men have baggage. Men have insecurities. When he was talking and he was questioning and kept questioning and, and probing and she kept saying, not right now, Jimmy. You're doing too much, Jimmy. You could see his insecurities showing. They were loud. Evidently, he must have had some experiences with a, a girl with an ex jail bay. Like, while he's in there, you just dealing with me until he come home. <laughs> Listen, ladies, men got baggage too and that was his baggage showing. Um, and I really feel like this could have went two ways. He did not have to continue to press on and pursue asking these questions. He made himself uncomfortable. But she could have also said, you know, because she didn't say, um, let's talk about it later. She just said, don't do this, Jimmy. Don't. This ineffective communicating. She just said, she could have looked at him and said, Jimmy, let me, let's talk about it, you know, privately, away from everybody else. Let's have the conversation, you know, in a secluded area at a different time on a date. I wouldn't mind answering all your questions, but I feel like right now is not the appropriate time. But he was big hurt. He do some of the most immature shit like walk off. This is the second walk off. Remember the walk off last week when he was talking about, I got to watch these pretty girls. His baggage comes with pretty girls. And the fact that they are available to everybody. You know that everybody wants them. If you can't handle a being with a beautiful woman, then, uh, you know, get one that's not so beautiful. And I don't know where they exist at because you're going to be in trouble because everybody is beautiful in our own right. Okay, we may not be always uh, what you like, but somebody likes us. I digress. Um, he storms off and he was like, what, what was the words he said? I exposed her. I caught her. I exposed her. I exposed her. Loud. It was embarrassing. She, uh, she actually got up and walked away. Oh, you big mad? Show me how mad you are. At first, I thought he was joking. Uh, and she, he should have went up, got up and went after her and had a conversation. Uh, we found out that she was in the bathroom and she was actually crying. She was actually crying because of the situation. Like, I told you this in confidence. I told you this just between the two of us. And here you are, bringing it up in front of everybody. We could have talked about this at another time. You didn't have to, you didn't have to do that to me. Like, and that's what she tells Aisha. And, you know, my heart goes out to her. It could have been easily diverted with, you know, because, it, again... There's our baggage. You open up your purse and there it is. Ex jail bay. I trusted him. I was in love with him. He lied about who he was. And now I'm, I have to go and talk about it. I didn't share this with you. And now you want me to share it with everybody else? We got to empty some of them baggages. Empty some of the shit that's in our bag. Uh, or at least learn how to communicate about it. Like right now isn't the time. Let's talk about it a little bit later. Especially because you vibing. What did, uh, was the divine that said? One minute I think they in love, gonna have babies, and the next minute they having a blowout. So much so that Jimmy left the party early. Okay, and of course, you know, um, as beautiful as Kimberly is, she still has that tough exterior, that, that side of her that's not vulnerable for them. Well, it, I felt like it was way time for him to go. That was too much. You know you feel some kind of way about him. You're gonna have to soften up a little bit. And we don't really learn that till it's too late. 
I'm speaking from experience. All this being tough and stuff is cool. You know, we got to protect ourselves. But we also, if we want to be in a relationship, have to know how to be softer and vulnerable. I'm rambling. Let's keep going. I always make these so long because of my damn opinions. Next week, I'm just going to tell y'all what it's about. My bad, y'all. It ain't going to be 40 minutes next week. My bad, y'all. Let me know what you think down below about the Kimber Jim, Jim, the Kimber Jimmy situation. So people are sleeping on Carrie, okay? Listen, because I'm all for Carrie. I'm all for it. Hey, Carrie. Like, um, he dresses well. He speaks well. Um, and he seems to be mature from what we can see. Like, he's been through enough to know now this is what I want. Y'all saw he raised his son. And now I'm ready to, ready to give myself to someone else. Only thing is, Carrie, be careful because some of these women don't have children and they're going to want children, especially when you go for the women that are in their 30s. Let's keep going. But they over there vibing and having a real conversation. And I like the fact he's doing another litmus test. If I told you I had a jet waiting for us at the airport and you can go anywhere you want to go, where would you want to go? And he, she says South Africa. And, you know, he's all like, oh, me too, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. But whatever. I like the fact that he wants to see where your mindset is. Are you ready to travel? Are you a traveler? Can you do that? You know, so that was a litmus test again, like the one for Reva. Uh, Y'all check my review. It's, it's going to come out. It's, it's late, but I'm putting it up right after this. Inside, we see Aisha going to shoot her shot with Mario. I mean, I don't blame her. I mean... Hell, Brent does not seem like he's interested. He don't. He ain't putting forth no effort. He too cool, daddy. Too aloof. You know what I'm saying? Too laid back. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's. She needs to make a connection, and so she shoots for Mario. Like I don't see anything wrong with it. Like, but he was like, uh, she her timing is off. It seems too much, too many eggs, and you know, I already I'm dealing with Reva and Tandy, and I can't handle a third girl. So at least he knows, or a third woman, at least he knows his limits. Like I can't be juggling three of y'all. I, I, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with the two of these women. All the while, Brent is over there looking at Aisha, and is like, listen. She throwing the same line she was throwing at me, and I'm not okay with that. No, you. what it is is uh, you now see that somebody else could possibly be interested or she could be interested in somebody else. Uh, reality is set in, and I don't feel like she's done anything wrong except for saying, I ain't scared. She has to figure out something or she going to be out. Eggs in one cart. So if y'all see me on Ready to Love in any future seasons, understand that I won't have my bad, my eggs in one cart. And I need to go on here, uh, listen to me, Will Packer and the casting directors, casting, uh, uh, listen. I need to go on here within the next year because I'm already 43, okay? I don't want to be the old lady on the show. <laughs> We are back at the Cigar Lounge and it is time to have conversations about the pool party and the interactions and connections that these gentlemen have made with these women. Uh, two women have to go. We are dropping out like flies, okay? Right off the top, Jimmy talks about Kimber and says that he's tried to text her. Um, because, you know, Tommy says, do you think it was inappropriate timing? Like, you think that that was, do you think it was an inappropriate play? It was inappropriate to bring it up at that point. He agrees and says yes. And so I've been trying to reach out to her and text her and talk to her. But, you know, she, she ain't having it. You know, she already said, once you, once you share something that I've shared with you in privacy, uh, you're dead to me. It's like a trust issue. You're dead. Okay, you overreacting. Kimber, that's the only person you got a connection with and you overreacting. You're going to be out. Both you and Jimmy are going to be out real soon. Oh, let me go back and say that I had wrote, I had four on the bottom, Nina, Aisha, Reva, or Kimber. So I had those four women on the bottom. Uh, Nina because she was anti-show show, Aisha because she ain't made no more connections, uh, Reva because, you know, I don't see where she going, how, how much further she going to go. And then Kimber because of the blow up. Brent on Aisha. He says that uh, it was it's not enough time to really fill out how, you know, how he sees her or whatever. And Mario chimes in. It feels like that she for everybody. He over there, does she talking to everybody, spreading herself thin. And I'm all like, Mario, where you get that from? Because, you know, Tommy said, well, we're. 
Where you get that from? Because the only other person that she was talking to was Brent. So Aisha did not spread herself thin. However, it confirms what Brent feels about, you know, her um, putting her feelers out. So Tommy asked Mario about Nina and he says that Nina has a red flag because of the blow up on the trolley with Tandy and it was a big blow up okay it was a it was a it was a uh where's she from I don't know but it was a it was a Watts kind of we straight from the projects Nickerson Garden bitch I'ma beat your ass <laughs> that's because that's where I'm from bitch I'm not from Nickerson Gardens but I'm from you know that's never mind but that kind of blowout bitch I beat your ass kind of blowout blow up and so it was a red flag for him and I liked Darren how he came to like you know, her defense, like, she doesn't act like that with me. I mean, she don't have, she's straightforward, she's a straight shooter, but she ain't never acted like that with me. Are you sure it was as big as you say it was? Like, he's like, damn, you finna let make her go? Like, I think he was really starting to dig her. London on Divine and Alexis says that he likes both of them, but in different capacities. They, he, he's vibing with them, but on different levels, in different ways. I really feel like the connection with Alexis might be a little more deeper, like might be a little more intimate. Whereas Divine seems surface because she is always very flirty. I like I said, I like the, you know, I like the spread. Like, you know what I'm saying? Bring more to the table. They even say that. Hold on. While London is talking about Alexis, he looks uh Jimmy looks salty over there right he looks salty and he's all like i'm gonna like who like me even if this if it's not even if it's, if it's a little i'm out of there and tommy tells him listen listen i'm gonna need you to pull up from that now catch 22 put your best foot forward you ain't been putting your best foot forward you need to try and connect with these ladies um if you haven't or if you excuse me if you have and you tried and then they're shooting you down then walk away okay don't become the stalker once this did true disinterest is shown go away this is where tommy tells them that two people gotta go then you down to your three two people gotta go and y'all gotta let them know who which one goes home and which one stays so it looks like it's london excuse me it looks like it's Aisha, Nina, and Divine on the bottom three. Now, I wasn't expecting Divine to be on the bottom three. But when Mario had made mention, like, she had thrown in the towel and given up because of the simple fact that she has competition, that was a red flag for a lot of people. And not to mention, Divine only has a connection with London. Put your eggs in more than one basket, ladies. How many times I'm going to say that? Uh, we know that this has already been recorded and we watching this stuff on the end. So I'm talking to you, ladies. Like, I'm talking to me while I talk to you. Uh, that way, when the, cat, when, the, when the basket gets stolen, we ain't looking like, where are my eggs? <laughs> anyway, I keep saying that. Um, so London has to talk to Aisha, Divine, and Mar Mario has to talk to Divine, and Carrie talks with Nina. So, first off, when Carrie tells Nina that it's time for her to go because she's not making any connections, she says, well, everybody has already found connections and are booed up. So, at this point, you know, I'm really the odd man out. And she graciously accepts that, you know, you know, who's for me is for me and he's going to come. And it's all right that I have to go. Hugs him, thanks him, and goes on about her business. Like, I was like, come through, Nina. You got a little growing to do, but I'm rooting for you to find love. And honestly, Darren is probably still texting you on the side, okay? He asked you to get kicked off. They probably ain't supposed to, but he probably made it known. I still want to get to know you. Anyway, because... Anyway. <laughs> we see Divine and Mario. This is where Divine lets it be known. She straight out, straight out says that this journey may not be for me. Like, I'm not used to this. I'm used to people want me, okay? Want me, focusing on me, and that's it. But now that you got some real competition, Alexis is getting just as much as, of attention as you from the man that you're interested in. You want to bow out gracefully? You want to bow out with your dignity intact? Because you don't want to be the lo biggest loser? Girl, you signed up for this. Ride it out. Ride it out. Put your best foot forward. Not only that, Mario has said to her, 
Show us who you are. We don't even know who you are. You sitting over there quiet. You know you uh, being very classy and elegant, which is a plus, right? But you aren't opening up and sharing conversations with people. You aren't letting people get to know you. And that's the thing. Fix it. Well, then Miss Aisha in London. London, uh, you know, shit. She, here's the, <laughs> let me just say this. They knew what, it, what was up. Because they had just gone through the process with the fellas. So they knew what they were being called for, okay? So Aisha, you know, she being flirty or whatever, and she not realizing that she's the one that's about to get taken off or the possibility to get kicked off, booted off the island. And he isn't as tactful as Carrie, because Carrie, of course, has a lot of maturity about him. Um, I would date a Carrie, okay? Uh, y'all y'all see what I'll say in a minute. Um, anyway... Um, he just pretty much says that the fellas feel like your journey is over, that you've been too aggressive. And she's like, oh, it's only been one person, which is Brent, not knowing that Mario had been running his mouth over there, talking about she was aggressive. Well, she was sitting on his lap. That is pretty aggressive. That is pretty forward. Um, but you know, you like what you like. It is what it is. Uh, to stop herself from crying, she put them glasses on, okay? And she was just a little salty, and then sashayed her ass right on out of there. <laughs> was the end of episode number six okay so here we are episode six halfway through because i think what we only got four left is it only 10 i can't remember how many it is however many it is we're six episodes in do you have any predictions because right now i feel like ashima and darren are a couple okay but i don't feel like they'll make it to the end i think they're gonna boot ashima off the island <laughs> and Darren has no other connections with anyone else, so he might get booted off the island too. Tanya and Mario, I want them to make it to the end. I really want to make it make it to the end. Reva won't make it too far. Um, I don't know about London and Divine and Alexis. Uh, I would hope that Carrie and Alexis might make a connection, even though to me they don't match. Like I feel like Aisha should have shot her shot with him. I don't know. What do I know? Anyway. Y'all let me know down below in the comments what you thought about this episode. If you have any predictions, who do you think is going off next? I think Kimber, Jimmy, they out. Like, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to make it. What's happening with them? I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you so much for watching my review of Ready to Love, season two, episode number six, Wet and Wild. If it's your first time visiting my channel, click the subscribe button. Be a ray of sunshine. And you're already there, so do me a favor and click the notification bell so you won't miss another Ready to Love uh, upload, review. It'll be like, oh, it's up, oh, it's up, get it, get it, don't stop, get it, get it. Do the brown, okay, whatever. <laughs> Last but not least, because you like me and I'll know it's real, give me a thumbs up. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll catch you on the next video.